All right, makeup geeks, I have a video today all about advanced foundation techniques. That's why I do not have makeup on because I am prepared to demonstrate. Excuse my voice today because it's a little nasally because I'm just getting over a cold, but this is how devoted I am. You see this? I'm filming while I'm sick and I got my hair back looking all like, you know, <laughs> not put together, but this is for you guys. So I wanted to just show you some advanced techniques and um, some of them you may know, some you may not. I just wanted to give various options for yourself or if you're working on other clients of how to treat the skin and how to use a variety of techniques and different types of foundation. So let's start first with how you're gonna prime your face. So the first thing you wanna do is assess it and decide are you combination skin where you aren't quite oily or dry, you're just like normal skin or do you tend to be more oily? Or dry and that's gonna dictate what kind of base you're gonna put on first before you do your foundation so first off if you have dry skin which I often do you want to use a light oil primer this is going to add moisture to the skin so the foundation doesn't look flat and really dry and cakey so I love using hemp oil but you can use any type of oil that's safe for the face just don't use a coconut oil it'll clog your pores um, if you have combination skin you can use a serum or you can use a cream my favorite one that I like to use is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. It's just a cream formula that's great for combination skin. It's really lightweight, but it'll add a little bit of moisture and it'll create a barrier between your skin and the foundation to help it just look smoother. And then if you have oily skin, this is a tip you may not know, you can actually put powder down as a base, something that's translucent like this. The Makeup Forever um, has the Ultra HD one, or you can find just a light um, loose powder that maybe is in your skin color is fine too. But what you can do if you have oily skin is you can just take a beauty blender and you can put it on the um, T-zone or wherever you get oily first, and then apply your foundation and it won't look cakey as long as you're just doing a light layer of it and it's just gonna mattify the skin. Do you see how I don't look shiny anymore? So it's gonna help a lot for that. So putting the correct base on is absolutely key. Tip um, number two outside of the base is you always have to look at your face as it's not all equal. I know that's hard to accept you guys. Hold on, let's take a sip of coffee to accept that. The reality is, is the whole map of your face is not equal. So some parts of your face may be oily, some may be dry, some may be more sensitive, some may be just fine. So you have to customize your foundation for the parts of your face. So for example, for me, my forehead gets really, really dry. So I have to put an oil primer on my forehead, but I tend to get a little oily in the T-zone right here. So that's why I put a little bit of the powder down first. So you have to always consider what parts of your face are going to um, be dry, oily, or maybe be acne prone. That'll come into play too. So I'm gonna take a beauty blender again, take some oil, or actually, you know what? Let's take a brush like this, a dome foundation brush, and I'm gonna prep my forehead, cause it's dry, and I'm gonna put a little bit of oil, and my eyelids get a little dry too, and then under the eyes for me do. So I do that, but did you notice that I put powder on my T-zone where I tend to get oily? So that's my first base. If you have combination skin, you can take your base like this and take the Beauty Blender again too. Make sure that it's slightly damp so that way um, it's a little bit softer and it applies more easily. But with this type of base, all you do is just pat a little bit of it on and it's just gonna hydrate the skin, give a smooth layer. It's gonna smooth out your pores a little bit. So prepping the skin is the absolute number one tip. Okay, now color correcting. So the only type of color correcting I like to do is one for under the eyes, which are barking today. Can you guys see? Do you see these eye bags on fleek? Yes, yes. <laughs> so I like to take a peach or orange base concealer. Um, I use this one. You can. It doesn't matter what brand. Eve Pearl has one, Bobbi Brown. I'll list them in the link below, so check the links for everything. But what I do is I take a little bit of the orange and it's gonna counteract the blueness and the grayness that tends to happen under the eyes and it's just for color correcting. It's not really concealing, it's just for balancing out color. And I apply a little bit layer of that, and do you see how I chose uh, one that was more saturated than my skin? And if you have medium to deep skin and you can't find a concealer that's orange enough for you, get an orange lipstick. Try to get one that's um, more of a matte finish and you can use that under the eyes and that's gonna balance out some of the gray undertones that happen under here. So that's the step for that. 
There's other correctors that are like green, yellow, purple, all of that. I don't find them as effective, to be honest. The only one I really like is the more orange-based one from the eyes. That, just my personal opinion, works for me. So after you have your corrector down, then we can go into foundations. So you don't have me just to sit here and talk to you guys with orange streaks under my face, but, you know, we're at that level now. We're like this, so it's okay. <laughs> all right, now choosing your finish of foundation. I have a separate video on that, and I'll link to that below as well so you guys can figure out how to choose the best foundation for your skin. But long story short is if you have dry skin, pick out a dewy foundation. If you have combination skin, pick out one that is satin. And if you have oily skin, pick out something that is very matte finish. So um, some of my favorite options that I have for matte finish or satin is the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric. It's one of my favorite go-tos, one I'm gonna wear today. And then for matte finish foundations, there's a few that I like. Um, the Kat Von D Locket or the Urban Decay All Nighters. And then my go-to is Estee Lauder Double Wear. I've worn this for years. If you guys watch my videos, you know I've worn this all the time. And then Dewy Skin, I don't have it with me because I'm not, um, I don't usually wear Dewy Foundation, but the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow and then NARS Sheer Glow. So again, I'll list all of these below in the description box. Okay, so for me, myself, I'm a little bit combination skin right now, so I'm gonna use the Power Fabric one. And what I like to do is start off with a color that's same as my skin, and then I'll show you how to do some highlighting without using shimmer. So you take the pump of foundation, you put it on the back of your hands, and there's a couple ways you can apply your foundation. You can use a rounded dome brush like this, or you can use a slightly damp beauty blender. I like doing the brush because I can buff it in and it gives a more natural glow to the skin. So what I'm going to do is pick up some of it on the back of my hand and go over that corrector. You can stipple it if you want, but then on the cheeks, you definitely want to buff it because you want it to get in the skin and be seamless and flawless. Okay, now the other trick, you guys, I know I have necklaces on today, but you always, always, always want to go down your neck a bit. There is not a time when you apply foundation, you cannot stop at the jawline because it doesn't matter how close the color is to your skin, you'll still see a difference between your face and your neck. So I like to start up here and then just start blending it down slightly. And then don't forget your ears, especially if you're wearing your hair up. I know this sounds crazy to put foundation on your ears, but your ears can look a different color too. So you just put a little bit on there and then kind of buff a little bit in the um, hairline without getting it in your hair. Okay, now one of my favorite tricks is to switch foundation formulas for this next step. Um, I like to highlight under the eyes on top of the cheekbones, the center of your face, because it's more flattering if you have some dimension where it's not all one flat foundation color. So I always, always, always have two foundation colors on me. The color I just used was 5.5. I'm now gonna go in with 3.5 of that same foundation. Or what you can do is switch to a matte finish. So if you are a combination skin or even oily, you can take a matte foundation in a little bit lighter color. And let me show you. So this is the Urban Decay All Nighter. Do you see how much lighter it is? What I'll do is I'll take a damp beauty blender, and this is where I'll highlight and add a little extra coverage because most of our blemishes are going to be in the center of the face. And so I like to cover right in here because I have redness and pores. And the matte finish foundation is going to keep that T-zone from breaking the foundation down with all that oil. And it just gives you a little bit more coverage. Now once the foundation is done, you can go on to setting the foundation. So one of my favorite tips is to never apply powder all over your face. And I know a lot of people will do that. If you do, if you have oily skin and you need that powder, put most of it in the center of your face. The outer edges should have the least amount of powder because we don't really have a lot of oil glands down here per se. They're more in the center of your face. So you don't need powder out here. This is generally where we start to look cakey is on the forehead and around the jawline. So that should be no powder or the least amount. So what I like to do is take another, you know, the Beauty Blender again, and I love this powder. It's inexpensive. It's the Maybelline Dream Wonder. It has some color to it, but if you want a translucent one, you can use that same one I used as a base, the Makeup Forever one, the HD powder. If you are getting photos done though, don't get a HD powder like this or something that has silica in it because it will bounce back and it'll cause your face to have like a really white 
um, ashy tone to it. So I prefer using something with just a little bit of pigmentation to it. So that's why I like the Maybelline one. But what I'm gonna do is I just literally press it into the skin. I don't like using brushes to apply my powder because what happens, we all have this big brush. You guys have, I know you have this brush in your set somewhere, a big ass brush like this and everyone's like swirling it and we're baking and we're doing all this stuff. We're cooking in the kitchen. I don't like using brushes for putting powder on because the bristles themselves, they're gonna start picking up a little bit of that foundation and it's gonna cause an uneven finish to the skin. So I like pressing it in with a soft sponge because I feel like it's soaking in that oil it's setting the foundation, but it's not scratching the surface and disturbing um, the flawless foundation that you just spent a long time applying. Make sure to put a little bit of powder here on the eyelids because they do get oily. And this will be a good primer for your eyeshadow as well. So that is the foundation steps. I won't get into contouring and highlighting all that. That's for another video. I just wanted to give you guys ideas of how to custom mix your foundation. So if there's anything you get from this video, primer is the key to getting a smooth finish and make sure that your skin is extra clean. It's very hydrated, drink lots of water. And then always, always, always have a couple foundations on hand, whether it be two different colors or two different finishes. Again, I love having a matte finish foundation and a dewy or a satin one and just making sure that you your face is not equal that the oily part is generally in the center of your face, so treat it differently with how you moisturize, how you prime, what kind of foundations you put on the different parts of your face. It's not just a one foundation all over is not always the option to work. That's, again, if you have the time and you wanna do advanced foundation, obviously if you're in a hurry, we ain't got time to do like a 10 step foundation. You're gonna buff that shiznit on, you're gonna put your powder on, you're gonna round out the door and go to work drinking your coffee in your hand. I know how it goes, but Hopefully this gives you some ideas with some different foundation techniques that you can use on yourself or other people. So don't forget to click on the links below for all the products I used. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out other videos right here. So thanks you guys for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.